We turn now in our service, and you really don't need your paper anymore. There's nothing on it to read or say or do. Put it down and relax. Time of confession, confessare, being together in telling our truth. Unless a confession is forced out of you, we only confess our deep truths when we feel safe, when we feel that someone is listening to us, and when we feel we can trust someone. The Bible is full of evidence of people who found that God was the one who would always listen, someone who was trustworthy, and one with whom they could feel safe to say anything and everything on their hearts and their minds. The emotions that make it hardest to share ourselves fully with each other might be depression, shame, fear, hurt. That if we do not define ways to speak our truth with someone, especially ourselves, something withers within us. Psalm 32, 3, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. When I did not confess my truth, I was worn out from crying all day long. I had the great fortune of going last Friday, a week ago Friday, to the movies with Lenora. And we had an afternoon date together. We went and ate at <clears throat> Guapo's in Sherlington. And she had fish tacos and I had way too many chicken enchiladas and <laughs> beans and rice. She saved a lot of hers. I ate all of mine. <laughs> and then we went to see a respect, the Aretha Franklin movie. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful day together. I'm just so grateful to have had that time. And when we saw Aretha as a little girl pregnant, that image stayed with us. And how no one listened to her. No, it wasn't even spoken of. It wasn't even spoken of. And when we came out of the theater, we talked again about Lenora's rape, which she has shared with a number of you here, uh, even in worship, as a 15-year-old girl raped by her brother's best friend. And she said no one ever talked about it, you know. There was nowhere to share feelings. And in a lot of poor communities, that's what happens because people are having to be so tough and to endure so much that it's like, if I let anything out, I'll break apart. And so there's a lot of holding in. I am very grateful that Lenora, through a funeral in the community, found her way to our midst. And she felt amongst you and with us, that this was a place where she could be listened to, where she could trust, and where she could be safe to share her truths. And in doing so, she overflowed with so much love for all of us. It's just amazing. Through everything she's going through, she always was smiling, always. 
So it's important for us to lament. It's important for us to speak our truths. These verses that I'm about to read to you, I chose them before and I couldn't change them. I don't have any reason to change them from Jeremiah's Lamentations. And this is when the people have had to go into exile and, and there's so much of life that feels right now like exile. We've been exiled from, from our own lives. <laughs> Many of the people were first brutally killed. They watched people die around them brutal, brutally. Many others were taken into captivity and a small remnant remained there, just a small remnant. And they had none of their sacred spaces, all of their churches and their, everything was torn down. None of their symbols were all gone. So listen for the emotions under these words. Listen for the sadness, the hurt, the shame, the fear. Lamentations 1, 1 through 4, 19 to 20. And if there are any who want to, this is, this is beginning now a time of personal reflection. I don't really have any other platitudes or words to say to you this morning uh, other than what I've already said. If anyone wants to begin walking the labyrinth while I read, and then after this, we're going to have a, just a time of personal reflection, and hey, Yoon will play, and then we'll see if there are any insights to share with each other. But I encourage you to feel safe. If you can't feel safe in this room to do something that is a little risky, I don't know where. I don't know where you will. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become. She that was great among the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a slave. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. <laughs> Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She lives now among all the nations and finds no resting place. The pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. And all of her gates are desolate. Her priests groan. Her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. to my lovers but they deceived me my priests and my elders perished in the city while seeking the food to revive their strength see O oh Lord how distressed I am my stomach churns my heart is wrung within me because I have been very rebellious. In the street, the sword bereaves. In the house, it is like death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's continue in personal reflection, walking, praying, meditating as we listen. Thank you. 
हैं ये I would really like for anyone who's in the room to just again, as we did with our gratitudes, just turn for a moment or two, if you want to, and if you don't, just bow your head and say, I don't want to. But if you're willing to just share a word about anything that's coming to your mind as you're thinking about lamentation, just do that for another couple of minutes with each other. One of the things I was, one of the things that I lament. perhaps even harder task to find those people with whom you can really attach yourself and share at least. And so we pray, am I not on? Oh, I turned it off. <laughs> I didn't want everybody to hear what I was sharing. I said to hey, Yoon, my lamentation 
at this stage of my life as a pastor is trying to understand what church means, what church is, what we need, what we should be doing here in this hour. I have no idea. I have no idea. I lament. And I'm sure we all do. So all we have is each other to try to figure out what we need. We need from our worship, what we need from our fellowship, what we need from our God. I also said I'm ashamed as a Presbyterian. I don't know, a lot of Presbyterians don't know the Bible very well and I'm right there among them. <laughs> don't please ever come up to me and say, where is that scripture that says, I have no clue. I'm going to Google the same as you. I feel shame about that. I feel shame. The sorrow. What happened? You haven't let God's word live, live in me and nurture me like it might have. The Holy Scriptures are for, and I feel like, uh, you know, time is running out to catch up. That's hard. I lament that. But, you know, um, Lenora couldn't even read. And yet, the Word of God filled her. And she taught me more about the love of God in, in, in a simple act than a lot of scripture could have taught me. And I take comfort in that. That's what we do for one another. That's what we do. So again, I'm going to end this section with a word of compassion. Again, from Lamentations. And I've turned Lamentations 3, 19 to 24, 31, 33 into a, into a prayer. Holy One, we remember our afflictions and our wandering. We know the taste of bitterness and resentment. We remember them well. And our souls get downcast within us. Yet this we call to mind, and therefore we have hope. Because of your great love, we are not consumed, for your compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We say to ourselves, God is who I need. And therefore, we will wait for you. For no one is cast off by you forever. No one. Though sin brings grief, you will show compassion, God. So great is your unfailing love. For you do not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. Thanks be to God. Friends, may the peace that Jesus had be with you all. Let's share some peace with each other this morning. Peace be with you. Peace to all. Everyone, these friends, peace, everybody. Oh, hey, Stephanie, how are you doing? Hey, Rhonda, Mike, hello, peace. Molly, peace with you all. David, George, peace to everyone. Hey, Cliff. Peace. Peace.
You'd like to leave something and there's an envelope for cash if you wish. And okay, but let's do the prayers and then Hey Yoon will play after the prayers before the charge, okay? Let's welcome Julie to the podium this morning. Yeah, let's see, I think you may need a microphone. Let me, let me give you this, it's the easiest thing. Good morning, church. Who will pray with me? Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you 
in his name. Know that we ask that you provide comfort and solace to Lenora Baker's grieving family, friends, and this congregation. Comfort us in our knowledge that she is now peacefully within your warm and loving arms. We invite prayers of the people, and I have one in our book, uh, that it is an announcement and it is a prayer. And let me read from Wilhelmina and Kors. As we are about to return to the Netherlands, we want to say thanks for being part of the warm and welcoming community that Westminster is. Bless you all. Lord, hear our prayers. If you don't have any others, would anyone like to offer a prayer this morning? If you have a prayer, a petition. I would like to give thanks for Reverend Reverend God for letting Christ into my and being such vessels of love and peace for all of us. Thanks to our pastors for all their love, support, and caring. To those of you on Zoom, Lord, hear our prayers, please. You know, Rob, I think I'd like to give thanks for an opportunity to go to the the Lord Nora, our servant, Lord, hear our prayers. I wanted to say uh, thanks to Will Mean and of course for letting her donate the furniture uh, to those needing and get down to helping facilitate that in the past. If you know of anybody who is in the furniture, then you can let her be your donation. Thanks to Will Mean and Course and their gifts and your facilitation. Lord, hear our prayers. So let us continue to pray. Let us pray for the world. God, our creator, you made all things in your wisdom and in your love, you save us. We pray for the whole creation, overthrow evil powers, right what is wrong, feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice so that all your children may freely enjoy the earth you have made and joyfully sing your praises through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray for this church and for our pastors. Gracious God, you have called us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Keep us in one faith and service, breaking bread together and proclaiming the good news to the world that all may believe you are love, turn to your ways and live in the light of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray for those who sorrow here and throughout the world. God of comfort, stand with those who sorrow, that they may be sure that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall separate them from your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for friends and families of Lenora Bakers and everywhere. God of compassion, bless us and those we love, our friends and families, that drawing close to you, we may be drawn closer to each other through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God of mercy, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of Christ. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray together in the way our Savior has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Since we have to get up and move anyway, I invite you to come and create a circle around the labyrinth as we go out today. So come on down. Slide this way. Slide. 
So especially to Wilhelmina and Kors, we commend you to God's care as you travel and as you return home to Netherlands, your faith community there. And we know that you will serve them the same way that you've served us in love and peace. So we bless you as you go on your way. So friends, go out of the world in peace, have courage, strengthen those who are weak, Help those who are grieving, honor all people, giving thanks always for the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen and respond to it wherever you are. And now may the Lord bless each of us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God's love shine on us and give us peace. Amen. 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 Peace. All right. When are you taking off? Right. Right.